This is my 1994 Acura Integra, which also happens to be my very first car that would end up changing my life forever. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys my humble beginnings as a car guy. This has also been the most requested video on my channel, so I'm excited to finally share it with you guys. And just a quick disclaimer for this video, since this was my first car and I was just learning about cars, some of the methods that I used to build this car originally, I don't currently agree with and I would not build the same today. But just know that because of those mistakes and because of those methods that I used back then, I have grown and learned from those mistakes to become the person that I am today so don't roast me too hard in the comments also it was a bit windy while filming this video so I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little distorted at times it makes me sound kind of demonic which is kind of scary but just know it's because of the wind I'm not actually crazy let's start where it all began June 9th 2014 at this time in my life I was 18 and working at five guys burgers and fries as my very first job just got out of high school and not too sure what I wanted to do with my life but one thing I knew for sure is that I need to buy a car to get around I had just gotten my license and I was saving every penny that I had a friend of mine sent me a picture of a car for sale at her local mechanic shop that she went to so I asked my coworker MG if he would come along with me and look at the car MG had an e46 and he knew about cars and was into cars so he was more than willing to me when we went to look at the car it was the integra obviously but it was five speed and i did not know how to drive manual so luckily mg did come along so he was able to drive me to a close parking lot nearby and he taught me how to drive my own car and then later that day i drove it to work the very first thing i did to the car was put a sticker on the quarter glass window which is actually still there to this day on this very beat up quarter glass window you can actually still see this mark that was also left on the window and that was there when i bought the car and another thing i did was learn how to use bondo because I needed to fill up those rust holes that were in the quarter panels. And you can see those three holes that were there. Those are actually these three holes right here. These are drilled out from the factory and they're supposed to hold this trim piece on there, but as you can see, it's missing. MG taught me three things to mod on the car that would make it better. First was lower it, second was wheels, and third was an intake. So I did just that. I found some wheels on Craigslist. Yes, Craigslist. Facebook Marketplace was not a thing back then. And since all I knew about cars was Need for Speed Underground, I was a bit of a ricer back then. So it didn't take long before eBay taillights ended up on the back of my car. I don't know, they weren't horrible, but looking back, I definitely would not do that again. And back then, I don't really know why this was a thing, but it was popular to spray paint like the rising sun on your fender or your hood. So, yep, I had to do that as well. <laughs> again, looking back, probably wouldn't do that again, but Hey, it was fun to just mess around and learn how to use paint. At the time, I also did not know how to do an oil change on the car. So I had my good friend Dan help me out and he taught me some of the basics about owning a car and how the car is a machine that will always require maintenance at some given point. And here I am now, changing the oil when it's zero degrees outside. And I also asked Dan about the rust and if there are any options that we could do to temporarily or permanently cover up the rust. And the solution that we came up with was kind of out of the ordinary, but it was actually to rivet an aluminum panel covering the rust holes. The thought behind that was aluminum can't rust, so it'll last a lot longer. Looking back, it may have not been the best idea at the time. It definitely did get the job done. It covered up the rust. And honestly, I was more than happy just to have the rust covered. One day I was in the city skating with some friends and minivan came up behind me and ended up ramming the back of my car. I think it was just out of road rage or something, but it ended up destroying my rear bumper and folded in the quarter panel a little bit. And that got me feeling really down. How are you just gonna ram your Ford Windstar into the back of my Integra and just drive off? Despite that crash, I continued to buy aftermarket parts for the car. They're probably all from eBay at the time. HIDs, control arms, and I even painted some of my interior at the time. Again, I was a bit of a ricer. All I knew was Need for Speed Underground, so sometimes you just have to go through that phase. MG and Dan were such positive influences for me early on, and I'm thankful that they let me be the ricer that I was back then, and just being open to teaching me new ideas and helping guide me into the right direction. But in a way, it's almost like the ricer that I was was like letting a kid be a kid, you know what I mean? But unfortunately, the racer activities did not stop there. MG and I ended up painting our wheels purple. <laughs> and shortly after, I decided to attempt to paint match the riveted panels on the car. That way they would look a little bit less noticeable. I started building model cars at a very young age, and I found a model car kit that was an Integra, so I figured it'd be pretty neat to do an exact replica. I even tried to paint the seats the same, make the same taillights, the sticker bomb fender, purple wheels, <laughs> the rising sun hood, and I honestly think it came out pretty close. But then I started to take my build more seriously. I started sourcing more parts. I found a late model spec rear bumper, and my friend Aiden was a truck driver, and he often went to Canada and brought back cars for himself, 
right-hand drive JDM cars. So I looked up import shops around where he would go in Canada and found a JDM front for sale and he was willing to bring it back for me. And if you guys are wondering at the time, that JDM front was only $400. I continued with the bodywork and tried to correct some of the damage that was done on the quarter panel and also installed the JDM front. Ben came over and helped weld the new core support into place and then I put all the new JDM panels on the car and the car looked completely different and I could not be happier to finally get rid of the circle headlights. As much as I love Integras, the circle headlights just aren't for me. This is actually a picture of the very first car meet that I went to by myself. Every car meet I've went to previously, I've gone with MG, but this time was different because he didn't have a car. He just sold it and was waiting for his car to be imported in from Aiden. I finally decided that the purple wheels had to go, so I spray painted them primer silver and then gold. MG's car finally arrived, and this car would end up changing the way I viewed cars forever. A Nissan Skyline R32. This is back when you can get Skylines for less than three grand. The Skyline wasn't perfect by any means. For example, it did have some wood screws holding in the over fenders onto the quarter panels. So MG and I would both be on the driveway working on our cars together, trying to fix our quarter panels and preparing our cars for a respray. I ended up trying to mold those aluminum riveted patch panels on the Integra, and I tried to bond with them smooth so you couldn't really tell that there was any damage or bodywork going on under there. I just wanted to get the car to look as OEM as possible. And then one day, MG let me drive his Skyline, and this would change my life forever. I'll never forget trying to shift with my left hand and use the blinker with my right hand, and it was just so backwards, and I hit the wipers on accident trying to turn. If you've driven a right-hand drive car coming from left-hand drive, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But we continued to hang out and go to many car meets, probably like three to four car meets a week. Back then, the car scene was popping. There were meets everywhere. Everyone would be looking, whoa, where are we headed tonight? Where's the spot? It was just so much fun, and there was no like shenanigans, and there wasn't people drifting or sliding the lots. The worst that would really happen is someone would just start revving their car obnoxiously, which everyone would be like, yo, what are you doing? Like, no one wants to hear that right now. But at this point in my car career, I knew that I wanted a rear wheel drive car or a right hand drive car or both. But again, I was still just a broke kid that just graduated high school and working at some minimum wage job, building this $1,500 Acura Integra that's rotted. But I ended up finding a right hand drive clip. I had no idea what I was gonna do with it, but I ordered it. I figured, hey, I'll figure it out one day. It can't be that hard. So that right hand drive clip sat in my garage for a year or so. One night while pulling into a parking spot at our usual meeting place, the lower ball joint on my Integra snapped and the wheel was smashed all the way into the wheel well. <laughs> so I ended up having to get the car towed to my place. And unfortunately that wasn't the last time the car was towed, but we'll get there. That same night I ended up buying another car. My friend's mom was selling her Volkswagen Jetta VR6. And she was the original owner. I think she only wanted like six or $800 for it. I don't remember, but either way I bought it because I was gonna need a car to get around. And luckily it was cheap enough that I was able to afford it at the time. I ended up trading that car a couple times. But that's for a whole nother video. While I had the suspension apart on the car, I decided to upgrade the front lower control arms and the rear camber arms, which surprise, surprise, were from eBay. And surprise, surprise, they didn't end up lasting very long. I ended up deciding at this point that I might as well respray the whole car. It started with just doing bodywork on what was damaged, but at this point I was realizing most of the car was already primered, so I might as well respray the whole car. One thing that really bothered me about the quarter panels that I had on my car were that they did not match the body line. The riveted quarter panels did not have this curve, so when the door line matched up to it, it was flat. And that did not look good to me. So what I did was I attempted to match the body line by filling in fiberglass and Bondo there and trying to smooth it out and trying to equalize it. I guess it kind of got the job done, but it wasn't perfect by any means. Oh, I also got a quieter exhaust because at the time I would be driving on the highway and my ears would just be ringing whenever I got to my destination because the exhaust was so loud. At this point, I wanted to learn how to work on cars properly. Not that my friends didn't teach me well enough or good methods, but I just wanted to know by the book and just how to do things correctly because the thought of wanting to keep this car forever and not knowing how to maintain it did not sit right with me. So I signed up for the automotive program at Juliet Junior College. The very first day there, our instructor told us, if you want to take this seriously, you should be working at a shop or something automotive related. That way you can put these practices to use and then you can come back to class with any questions that you may have from on the job. 
So that very same week, I quit my job and I went to the nearest automotive shop, which just so happened to be Meineke. And I asked them, hey, are you guys looking for any entry level positions? I know how to change oil, that's about it. But I am going to school right now so I can better my career and expand my knowledge on how to work on cars. And they ended up hiring me on the spot. Sometimes in order to get a position, all people really need to know is that you're willing to learn and that you're a teachable person. I feel like those two things go a long way with anything that you're trying to accomplish. At this point, the car was coming together and it was ready for paint. I finally found a better wheel than that flexible eBay wheel. And I would end up trading that new wheel for this wheel with a random guy that I found at a car meet. I think this is his hub too, yeah. This red and mine was black. I'm currently searching for a Sparkle wheel or a Momo wheel. So if you come across one, let me know. And then I'll sell this one if anyone wants it. Then one day I was driving home from the skate park and I got T-boned in an intersection. An oncoming car turned left into me. Strangely enough, that is exactly how the crash happened with my 240. I'll attach the playlist if you want to check out the 240 story. That car is just a whole series in itself. Also, I couldn't believe it because it was a modded car that hit me. I was like, dude, aren't car enthusiasts supposed to be better drivers overall? Either way, that was really a bummer because the quarter panel that I had worked so hard on and put so many hours in was completely destroyed. And upon inspection, the damage went farther than the quarter panel. The bushing on the trailing arm was bent. So I ordered new ones for both sides and pressed them into the trailing arms. I also noticed the toe arm was bent, so I also replaced that. Once I replaced all the broken pieces in the rear suspension, I reinstalled the stock lower front control arms and then aligned the car. Fun fact, this rolling shot was taken from inside Nate's 300ZX, which he had just purchased. He didn't even have his license yet, so I had to drive it back home for him. <laughs> what an accomplishment at such a young age. It's honestly probably for the best that the crash happened when it did. Once I started peeling back the riveted panels, I noticed the rust had grown a significant amount. If I had gotten the car painted, the rust could have continued to grow beyond the panels. I wanted to repair the quarters in a better way this time. And if you're curious what insurance paid for the crash, it was only around $600, which I feel like was kind of bogus, but whatever. And also at the time, Integra aftermarket quarter panels were not available. Fun fact, they're still not available. I met this guy named Joe, and he was willing to help me splice the car together, basically cut and weld different panels on the car. And we found out that the EG quarter panels line up. Even the gas door lines up. It's just a different shape quarter panel. The EG quarters were just slightly wider. So we ended up welding those on. And I told him my problem before with doing my quarter panels is that it didn't follow the body line of the door. So we ended up finding a spare door from an Integra and we cut the door skin off and welded it onto the quarter panel to try and match the body line. Once the quarter panels were welded on, it was time to fill in all the low spots with fiberglass and Bondo. I also tried to match the body line from the EG quarters onto the Integra rear bumper. I was excited with the progress, but noticed one of my side skirts flew off. The rocker panels were so rusty that there were no mounting holes for them anymore. So I went back to Joe and we fabricated some new rocker panels and welded them on. Days and days of bodywork later, the car was finally starting to take shape again. We would still constantly go to meets and hang out and talk with each other about the progress that we've made on our own projects, but the rust kept getting the best of my Integra. The brake lines looked like Slim Jims and started to leak brake fluid. Luckily, we had already gone over how to make brake lines in auto class, so that wasn't too bad of a job to do. But then my gas tank would only hold half a tank of gas because there was a rust hole right in the middle of it, right where the seam is. So I replaced that tank with a brand new aftermarket one. And again, we kept going to car meets and strengthening our friend group and expanding our car group. But then I was thinking, since I met this guy that knows how to weld and splice together metal, maybe he could help me do the right-hand drive conversion my Integra. So I asked him and he was willing to help me out. We figured it'd be best to do it at his place since he had all the tooling and welding and all that kind of stuff there already. And unfortunately he lived about two hours away. So during the week I'd go to school and work at Meineke. But on the weekends, I would drive two hours up to Wisconsin, work all day Saturday, sleep there Saturday night, work all day Sunday, and then drive all the way back home and then repeat. And yes, I definitely transported this right-hand drive clip inside the Integra. The very first day of the right-hand drive conversion, when I was stripping the interior, I came across this fortune. And I've never seen a fortune so relevant in my life before. This was also my very first time pulling an engine out of a car. We decided this would be a good opportunity to delete the ABS while we have everything out of the engine bay. Luckily, the right-hand drive conversion came with non-ABS brake lines and proportioning valve. But since the other lines were so rusty on the car, I decided to take all of those off as well. And what I did was zip tie the new line onto the old line so I can try and match the bends. That way the install would be smoother and it would look factory. After a couple months, it was finally time for the very first test drive and I was so excited. Driving this car right-hand drive was such an experience. I was so proud of myself that I followed through and actually achieved my goal. Although it's not like a real JDM right-hand drive, I think it's pretty cool that I was able to make this. 
knowing very minimal about cars. MG also picked up his second R32 Skyline. The blue Z that's in the back of this picture is actually Iden's very first import. The very first right-hand drive JDM car to enter our friend group. I feel like this twin turbo Z32 is what helped guide my mentality to where it is today. MG's new Skyline came on these super sick wheels, which I manifested owning one day. <laughs> These are the exact wheels on my Integra today, actually. The left-hand drive center console was different from right-hand drive, so I ended up sourcing one from a JDM Type R, so it had the cool carbon centerpiece. I found this neat rear brace that allowed to keep your rear seats. This honestly took so long to install, it's much harder than it looks, but I think it looks sick. The year is now 2016, and car meets are nearly an everyday thing. I honestly feel like the summer of 2016 was the peak of car culture, at least around the Midwest. I met an insane amount of people this year, and I think I went to more car meets in this one summer than all of my other years combined. One random night, my friend was painting his 240, and we wanted to test out the paint color that he bought. So we took off my Type R wing and sprayed it. So that's why it's blue. Then I found an Integra part out and was finally able to replace that smashed door. Now the car is completely straight, although not one color. With all the automotive knowledge I've accumulated at this time, I figured it'd be a good idea to start trying to make some money off of it. So I decided to buy a project car strictly to flip. I found this red Integra for sale. It was a five speed, but it was completely rotted. I think it was like $200 or something like that. I don't know, it was under $500 for this car, running and driving. It was missing a bunch of parts, like no exhaust, no hood, whatever. But luckily I had a bunch of spare parts and also my friends had spare parts. So we ended up piecing this car together in less than a week. I was able to sell it to a friend for around a thousand, which even still is a pretty good deal, I'd say. I found this really beat up exhaust manifold for free and I really wanted to try and fix it. So I visited my friend Dan and we ended up cutting off all the bent parts and welding this pipe that was cut in half onto the bottom and trying to make our own tubes out of it. And he had also recently picked up his own project car, a Pontiac Fiero. But it was back to the grind. More body work, more modifications, more car meets, and plenty of late night hangouts. Once again, I continued to replace all of the eBay suspension that had failed with some better parts. I was still in auto class at the time, and we were beginning the manual transmission course. I asked my teacher if I can bring in my own manual transmission to rebuild, since I had one in my car that had a third gear grind, because every time I'd shift to go and he said, yeah, okay, fine. So I ended up finding a spare transmission, swapping that into my Integra so that I can have the original transmission out with a third gear grind, brought it to class, and I was able to tear it apart and learn how it all works. And I found that some of the teeth on the Synchro were smoothed out, which affects how it feels when you shift into gear. If they're sharp, it'll go nice and smooth. If the teeth are smoothed out, it'll grind because it does not adapt to the gear correctly. And since that third gear had been grinding for so long, the 3-4 slider was also starting to get shaved off smooth. There's supposed to be sharp edges, but it was actually rounded off. So I ordered some transmission parts and I put everything back together and I put it back in the car and the car drove perfect. That transmission is still in the car to this day and hasn't been out since. Also, it still has the same clutch in the car from when I bought it in 2014. I've put at least 100k miles on this thing and taught at least 10 people how to drive stick in it as well. And that's not including myself. So whatever clutch is in here is an absolute unit. At this point in my life, I had left Meineke and started working at Advanced Auto Parts. They offered better pay and it was less physical labor. So I was all for it. The year would continue to be full of car meets and I would continue to bring the right hand drive Integra to all of them. Despite how ugly it may have looked at the time, it was still so fun driving it and constantly growing connections. My brother Nate also found this body kit for his Z for super cheap. And this thing looks sick at night. I decided I was finally tired of looking at the car with mismatched panels. I did my last look over on the bodywork on the car and it was time to paint it. I decided to paint the car in my garage. I had some friends come over and teach me some basic techniques they knew about painting. We sanded the car, sprayed the base coat, wet sand, clear coat. The car didn't look too bad, but I decided to throw some gold flake in the clear coat and it may have gone a little heavy on the flake. <laughs> Overall, the car didn't look too bad though. Although people did say it looked kind of green from a distance, which I thought was kind of strange, but I could definitely see it. Do you think it looks greenish at all? I also wanted to clean up the curb rash on the wheels I had. This would now be the fourth time respraying these wheels. It didn't turn out too bad, but looking at it now, not my style. But that's just the fun of it. I was just so hyped to have my car one color. I'm sure you guys can all agree on that feeling. Not too long after painting the wheels, I took the valve cover to school and sandblasted it. Then I paint matched the valve cover gold so it matched the wheels. 
After I painted the car and finally seeing the vision come together, many nights were spent catching up and hanging out with friends. Although it didn't last long until I decided to do something else to the car I had recently finished. I began researching and collecting parts to do a 5 look swap because I thought 5 look was like one of the coolest things you could do to a 90s Honda. And honestly I still kind of feel that way. And working at the parts store I also had a pretty good discount as well. I decided to get ARP studs which I don't think I'll ever do again. I don't know let me know what you think. They kind of stick out a bit much. But the idea was if I ever needed to run a spacer I wouldn't have to use the adapter spacer I could just use the slide on or you could just get wheels in the correct spec. These wheels don't even have spacers on them and it looks great. I sandblasted and coated the knuckles and trailing arms. Then I was able to mount everything on the car and it was finally time for a test drive. I picked up some 300ZX wheels and slapped those on the car. Honestly, I thought the wheels looked pretty good despite the tires being massive. I don't know, what do you guys think? Here's a fun fact, if you've watched this video, the video that's titled, This Car Mod Saved My Life, this is the timestamp where I stole my car back, finished the right-hand drive swap, finished the K8 dual cam swap, which yes, this is the same garage that the 240 is in now, being finished yet again. I will also include that video if you want to check that out. My newer exhaust started to rattle, so Dan and I cut it apart, yanked out the cheap internals, and welded it back together. I also decided to relocate the battery in the trunk, so we made a nice little battery hold down for it. At this point in the build, I've owned this Integra for three years. Between my brother and I, we had a pretty sick lineup, although only two of those cars in the picture are still with us today. This being one of them, and the 240 being the other. I really did think painting the car one color would reduce the amount of times I got pulled over, but no, I still got pulled over plenty of times for the most ridiculous things ever. Probably the most reason I've been pulled over is no front plate or aftermarket exhaust. Not even loud exhaust, just the fact that it looks aftermarket, they'll pull me over. And even still to this day that happens. It's pretty annoying. Later that year, I moved down south to Carbondale, Illinois. I wanted to further my education, so I signed up for the automotive program at Southern Illinois University. Me and a few friends that I met at JJC ended up renting a house down there while we were going to school. And the house was kind of crappy, but the backyard was amazing. It was probably one of the only houses there that had a huge parking lot behind the house, and it was just for us. We set up like a mini skate park with some ramps and grind rails, and also just working on the cars all the time. It was so nice to not do it in the gravel. It definitely was hard at first moving down to Carbondale because I was so far away from all the friends I'd made back home and I really missed going to car meets and meeting more car people and just, you know, spreading that knowledge and information and the desire to learn more about cars. So I ended up driving back up north quite often. It's actually five hours each way and I would catch as many car meets as I could. I would also begin hosting car meets of my own and eventually I'd host my very first charity car meet, which would raise over $1,000 for the local health clinic. MG ended up selling his second Skyline and he bought a JDM Twin Turbo Fair Lady Z. My brother sold his 300ZX and saved up and bought an R32 Skyline sedan. I'm glad I went back so often so I didn't miss out on my friend's memorable moments. I had three cars at that time as well, two Integras and the 240 of course. I didn't really do much to the right hand drive Integra at the time, but I did however get around to updating the interior fabric. which actually it still has some of that on there today. It is long overdue to get restored because it is like completely peeling and flaking off. It looks like crap. I don't know. And St. Louis, Missouri wasn't too far away, which held a ton of drift events. So I'd find myself going there at least once a month for a drift event. Then one day I found an abandoned Integra in the mall parking lot, which I would end up buying for $50. And I have a whole video about that car as well. So I'll be sure to attach that video if you guys want to check that out. That's a whole nother story within itself. Also, it's kind of weird yet a good feeling to see all three of your cars at a car meet. Sometimes I'd ask my roommates if they wanted to take one of my cars to the local meet while we were in Carbondale. With all the projects I had and all the skills I've acquired, it was time for me to step it up a notch and buy a welder. My dad was living out in New York at the time and had a welder, and he said I could have it for free if I came and picked it up. So during my last semester at SIU, during spring break, I drove 16 hours from Carbondale, Illinois to New York. When I arrived in New York, my dad and I hung out for a day, and he also took me to a storage unit, which is where he'd end up giving me a welder and also a bunch of spare tools. On March 10th, 2019, I began my journey back home to spend time with friends during the week I had off of school. 20 minutes into the drive, I hit this ice patch. It must have been black ice or something, I literally did not see it. And I spun out on the highway and kept spinning into a ditch and ended up smashing into a tree.
The feeling of spinning around and around waiting to see if you're going to survive or not is one of the most surreal experiences. A random car ended up driving by and asking if I needed any help and I said no but you know what they called the cops anyways so that they can come help. I had already called the tow truck through my insurance company which is going to be a lot cheaper than any other option but when the cop showed up the first thing he did was write me a ticket for driving at unsafe speeds. How are you going to write me a ticket you weren't even here and then he also called the police tow. So he didn't even care that I had already called a tow truck, which if you guys know about this, it's a lot more expensive paying for a police tow. And they just charge whatever they want because they know that they can get away with it. My Integra was winched out and I ended up riding with the tow truck driver and we were on our way to the impound lot. Along the way to the impound lot on the same exact highway, not far from where I spun out, there were other drivers that were spun out in the ditch as well. Luckily for them, they didn't end up hitting any trees, but they also didn't receive any tickets and the tow truck driver winched them out for free. Luckily, I just received a scholarship at school, which ended up paying for most of those expensive just from the crash alone. The ticket by itself was over $600. The tow was another $600. I don't even remember the impound lot fee, probably like two or $300. And I did consider myself to be a good driver, but after spinning out, I was really questioning my driving capabilities. But after seeing those other cars spun out, I felt a little better about myself. So here I am 16 hours away from home with a smashed car, Racking up fines and fees, what am I gonna do now? I ended up towing the car from the impound lot back to my dad's storage unit. And there I would inspect the car and see what all needed to be repaired in order to drive it again. And this is where it gets crazy. When I loaded the welder into the car, I put it in the right rear, right around here. And that is the exact spot where the tree had impacted the rear of the car, which unfortunately broke the welder. <laughs> I noticed that the front suspension was bent. I took off the control arms and started inspecting what was going on. Basically, everything on the front right was completely bent, but luckily the knuckle and the upper control arm were still straight. And since the rear window exploded, I ended up taping the back of it so it wouldn't be so cold driving home. During the drive home, I had a lot to think about what I was gonna do with the car. This Integra was my first car and I've made so many connections and friends and memories through this car, not to mention what this car has taught me overall. So I decided to fix it. It wouldn't feel like the same car if I just reshelled it or bought a new car. And that's another huge reason why when people say I'm fixing the 240 just for clout, I'm like, no, actually, I've done this before. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've been in this position before, but I didn't even have a YouTube channel back then. This was just, I literally posted this all on Snapchat and a couple Facebook posts, but that was it. And back then, a lot of friends on Snapchat were saying, dude, you should start a YouTube channel. I would actually watch you. So for those friends that told me to do that, thank you. Anyways, back to the story. While I was driving back, I was searching for a part out Integra. When I finally arrived at my hometown, I had three days to get the car done and drive it back to school. I ended up finding the perfect candidate for parts, a 2001 GSR with a JDM front, and it was in the same town as me. I had some friends come by and they ended up towing it to my house. The shell was only around $600 and my brother actually bought the JDM front off of it and put it on his blue Integra. Fun fact, I would end up buying that JDM front off of Nate and putting it on my sedan Integra. Another fun fact, the front shock towers and subframe from that shell are now welded and installed on the rear of Dan's Fiero. I began cutting away anything bent on my car so that I can see what I had left to build off of. I was shocked to find out that the frame rails in the rear were still straight. Once I removed the damage from my Integra, I began cutting the new shell. Now I will mention one thing about the method that I used to repair the car. I do wish I did it differently, but it's because of the way that I did it that I know what I know today. Sometimes you just have to try things and that's the only way you're gonna get better. If you're not trying, you're not putting yourself out there, how are you gonna improve yourself? I mean, watching can help, but it does not help nearly as much as putting in the effort, putting in the work, learning, failing, falling, getting back up, repeat. It's just a process. If I were to do this again, I most likely would have used a spot weld drill bit to drill out all the panels and paste it onto the car at the OEM spec. After I had both cars completely chopped, I installed the new hatch and lined up the rear clip onto my chassis. I became so excited to see the car straight again. 
I borrowed a friend's welder and started melting the car back together. I did not have much welding experience prior to this, only a couple tack welds on a machine that was already set up for me. So this was a very difficult task and the welds were not pretty by any means. But I ended up getting the car back together right in time, then drove it five hours back down to school. I even drove the car to class the very next day and I felt very accomplished for all the work I've put in for the past few days and nights. The class that started when I got back was Intro to Fabrication. This class would teach students how to sharpen drill bits, use grinders, how to set up and use a welder. And I was thrilled because I wanted to know how to use a welder. I even asked my teacher, hey, I have this uh, project car that needs some welding done. Is it okay if I bring it into class and weld on it a little bit? And he said, yes. So the next day I brought this into the classroom and started welding. I even let some of my classmates weld onto the car as well. And if you've watched that Integra Sedan build video, this is also the time that I welded the rear clip onto that car. I ended up finishing the welds on both cars, but ended up leaving the right-hand drive Integra in a friend's garage in Carbondale when I moved back up north into my very first apartment. I focused on finishing the sedan Integra to be a daily driver and started taking my 240SX build more seriously. Since I had gotten a corporate desk job, I finally had more money to build my cars how I have always wanted them. But I found that I had absolutely no time for anything else. So I quit my desk job and became a lead tech at a performance shop that helped me feel like I was actually doing something I was passionate about. At the end of the day, I found that I was just sick and tired of working on cars and I didn't even want to work on my own car. I had begun feeling down that this was my future. I never wanted to be in the rat race. I had lived my entire life building, learning, creating. I couldn't just waste my time and potential at some stupid job with a boss who looks at you like a number. Multiple BS jobs later, and I mean at least four different jobs, the 240 crash happened, and I was let go of my general manager position at an auto body parts warehouse. Ever since then, I have been filming, editing, and creating YouTube videos all on my own. I'm barely getting by financially, but I honestly couldn't be happier. Let this be a lesson to you to just do things that make you feel alive and follow your passions. Even if it is hard and seems impossible, find a way. There must be some parts of your day that you can cut out to prioritize your passions. And you never know, maybe your passion will take off and you will be able to live your dream. But if you never try, then you'll never know. And it wasn't until recently that I started driving and working on this Integra again. I've been using it as a truck basically, but I just hope if you're watching this, you know that if you put your mind to something, you can 100% achieve it. And honestly, I'm so proud of myself for how far I've come, not only with this car, but just in my automotive career in general. I honestly only made it this far because I believed in myself. It didn't matter what other people told me to do or what other people thought about me. I'm not exactly where I need to be, but I know if I keep putting in this hard work, I will be someday. I've had a lot of people talk crap about this car, but you know what? Many years later, still here. I definitely wish I can clean this up or if there's a junkyard near you with a rust-free Integra let me know. I'll come by and grab those quarters because ultimately I need to do this entire job all over again. These past eight and a half years with this car have been crazy. There's at least 12 different Integras that make up this one Integra. Honestly, the only thing that's still original on this car is the roof, the front shock towers, the rear shock towers, the floor, and surprisingly, the carpet. It's kind of nasty. Ugh. But that's why I was trying to grab that carpet out of the junkyard Integra. I don't know, not too bad for what this car has been through. What do you guys think? Since this is my first car, I know I can never get rid of it, but this car has honestly been a major part of my life. Let this be a reminder to never stop progressing, which is actually my new merch design. And this is what the back looks like. No fresh starts, keep the story alive. That quote is not only relevant to the 240 build, but also to this Integra build. I'm sure you guys definitely agree with that. All my shirt designs have been based around the 240, and I think now I can finally make one about the Integra, since now you guys know about it. And if you have any ideas of what you would like to see on a shirt, let me know. I've had a fun time filming this video and looking back at where I started in my automotive career. Even though filming outside has been absolutely freezing, I think it was definitely worth it. I mean, it's so freezing that the ground is actually ice right now. Look at this. Oh, hold on. Let me get a rolling shot. And I know this video is supposed to be just about the Integra build, but I guess it also shared a lot about my life. But that just shows the connection to the car and how I've grown with this car. If you guys have any questions about this car, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll respond to it. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like. It's the best way to spread the video. If YouTube sees it's getting a lot of likes, it's going to share the video more. Don't forget to subscribe to see more and I'll see you guys next time. There it is, my very first car.